Hi, I'm Tom Miao Li from University of California, Irvine, the Parallel System and Computer Architecture Lab. Today, I'm glad to present our work on detecting specter attacks using hardware performance counters. This work is featured in the IEEE transaction on computers June 2022 issue. This paper focuses on detecting specter attacks. So specter attack basically exploits speculative execution of CPU instructions, which is widely adopted on most of the modern processors. It is hard to detect using the existing software-based antivirus because most of the software antivirus relies on analyzing system log files. However, a specter attack left no traces in the system log files. Therefore, we propose to add additional layer of antivirus at the hardware level in order to detect specter attacks by analyzing deviations in microarchitecture features from performance counters. The contribution of this paper includes three parts. First, we develop a power-based detector to detect the original specter attack. Then we modify the original specter attack to evade detection from our detector. Finally, we further enhance the detector to be able to detect evasive specter attack. So let's start with the original specter attack. Specter attack exploits speculative execution to leak protected data through cache timing or other side channels. Here we show an example of specter attack version 1 proof of concept attack. Basically, the attack consists of three phases. In the first phase, a branch predictor needs to be trained so that it will always go inside to this if condition. And they also need to ensure that certain data are not in the cache. In the second phase, the processor will go inside this if condition and load the data from the memory. However, when it realizes that it go into the wrong execution path, it rolls back the execution, but the cache status is not rolled back. So in the third phase, the attacker can simply perform a cache site channel attack to obtain the info in this array too. By analyzing this attack, we have formulated two hypotheses. First one is that the attacker will need to train the branch predictor, so then it will reduce the branch misprediction rate. And second one is that it will also need to flash data from the cache. That will increase the cache miss rate. Our proposed detection approach consists of three stages. In the first stage, we collect the cache and branch related features from the performance counter units every 0.1 seconds. And all the data will be used to train the base classifier. The base classifier are trained using different machine learning algorithms, including logistic regression, support vector machine, and multi-layer perceptron. And during the online detection phase, the online detector will take into the decision from the base classifier and will group the data into a sliding window and make decisions according to the weighted average. If it's greater than the threshold, it will, it will give a one denotes malicious attack and if it's less than the threshold, it will be zero, which denotes the normal condition. The machine we use in our experiment is a typical laptop computer, which has an Intel Core i3 processor running Linux. And we configure the performance counter monitor to monitor these cache related and branch related features. And we use the building Linux to perf to obtain system wide performance counter data. And during the clean environment, we'll run different browser streaming videos and text editor applications. And when system is under attack, we will run the Spectre proof of concept attack on top of these normal programs. So here we plot the data distribution of the branch miss rate and also last level cache miss rate of the malicious data and also the normal data, we can see the two group of data has a clear boundary between them that makes classification possible. The first table shows the performance of our detector for system with no stress 
as we can see, as the complexity of the classifier increases, we were able to achieve a reduced false positive and false negative rate. However, the training time increases. And we further stress our detector with different workloads. On top of the normal applications and attack, we run memory intensive, CPU intensive, and also both of them to stress the system. However, we were able to achieve the detection accuracy above 90% for all our tested scenarios. Next, we stand at the point of view of an attacker to evade detection. We assume the attacker knows the features being monitored by our detector and also obtain the sampling period from reverse engineering. The basic idea to evade detection is that to use X amount of time within the period to perform the attack and use the rest of the time to reshape the microarchitecture features so that it will behave similar to a normal program. That will make detection more difficult or impossible. However, the attacker has to sacrifice efficiency to perform the attack more slowly and also sacrifice attack success rate because Spectre is time sensitive. To study the feasibility of evasive Spectre, we have to meet two criteria. One is to ensure progress of attack. Another is to make sure there will be enough time left to reshape the microarchitecture features. So first, to make progress of attack, we define three atomic tasks which cannot be interrupted. They are flashing the cache line, mistraining the branch predictor, and inferring secret bytes. By measuring the time of each task, we find that the time taken for each task is less than the sampling period 100 milliseconds, so we can infer that there will be enough time left to reshape the microarchitecture features to make Spectre evasive. In addition, we define four different strategies for, to reshape the microarchitecture features. We can either put the attack to sleep in between atomic tasks, or we can put the attack to sleep after all the tasks have completed, or we can insert instruction in between atomic tasks, or after all the tasks have completed. The inserted ins instruction, for example, if the attack increased the cache miss rate, we can insert instructions that will reduce the cache miss rate. To further study the feasibility of evasive spectre, we take a sample attack, we execute atomic tasks using 20% of the sampling period, and then put the attack to sleep for the rest of the period. We were able to achieve 89% of attack success rate, and here we plot the last level cache miss rate and branch miss rate distribution. The red and blue one shows the original Spectre attack and the normal programs. There was a clear boundary between them. The green one is the newly developed evasive Spectre. We can see that there's an overlap of the green one and the blue one, so that makes detection difficult or impossible. Here, we plot the detection accuracy for each evasion strategy. And within each graph, we also compare different machine learning classifiers. As we can see, as the bandwidth reduces, which means the attack becomes slower for all scenarios, the detection accuracy drops, which means the detection become more difficult or the attack become more evasive. In addition, we also observe that the multi-layer perceptron classifier was able to maintain a better detection accuracy as the bandwidth drops. Here we combine the detection accuracy or the attack evasiveness of all different strategies inside one graph, and also we plot the result of attack success rate inside this graph. We have observed that there's a trade-off between these two parameters because as we can see, the green one represents strategy one, was able to achieve a more evasive attack. However, the attack success rate also the lowest. On the other hand, the strategy four was less evasive, but it was able to achieve the best success rate. Therefore, overall, we find strategy two is the most effective one.
which was able to maintain a reasonable attack success rate and also evasive. Finally, we want to improve our detector to be able to detect evasive specter. To evade detection, the attacker needs to reverse engineer the features and sampling period of the victim detector. So the key idea here is that if we can make reverse engineering more difficult, it will make it harder for the attacker to evade detection. And here we use randomization to introduce error in reverse engineering and make the detector resilient to evasion. So we constructed four detectors with different features and sampling period settings and switch between them randomly. To reverse engineer the settings of victim detector, the attacker constructed multiple reverse engineering detectors with different settings, either using cache, branch, or combined features, or try different numbers for the sampling period. Then the decision of the reverse engineering detector is compared with the output of the victim detector. If they are having more number of equivalent decision, that means they are similar or having the similar settings or having higher reverse engineering accuracy. And here we can see for the baseline victim detector with no randomization, the one with the highest accuracy is chosen and it was able to reverse engineer the correct settings. However, as the randomness of the victim detector become more and more complex, the reverse engineer accuracy drops a lot for each cases, and the attacker wasn't able to obtain the correct settings for the victim detector here. Here, it infers the victim detector only use cache features. However, it's switching between like different features. And here, it shows the wrong result as well. So that makes reverse engineering more difficult for the attacker. This graph compares the detection accuracy for the original spectre detector and the evasion resilient spectre detectors. As we can see, as the bandwidth reduction increases, the detection accuracy for the original spectre detector drops a lot, especially when the reduction above 7x. And in extreme condition, when the reduction is at 30x, the detection accuracy was only able to maintain at 50%, which is no better than a random guess. For the evasion resilient spectre detector, it was able to maintain a much higher detection accuracy. In addition, we observed that the detector with higher randomness was able to maintain at a much higher detection accuracy. And in this case, for the blue one, which randomized both features and period in all tested scenario, the detection accuracy is always above 80%. To conclude this presentation, we have developed a spectre detector by monitoring microarchitecture feature deviations from hardware performance counters in CPU. We also constructed an evasive detector to avoid detection by the proposed detector. And further, we improved the original detector by randomly switching between different detectors with different settings to counter evasion. For future research, we will expand this work to detect other attacks targeting other hardware vulnerabilities, including GPU vulnerabilities. We will also experiment online learning and other unsupervised learning algorithms to involve user feedback and respond to ever-changing malware behaviors on different architectures. Thank you for your attention. For any questions or comments, please send email to this address.